for the 15th of October. And uh, we're going to mix the uh, schedule up a little bit simply because uh, we don't have the DFOF on board just yet. And uh, I welcome everyone. Thank you very much for taking um, uh, part in this hearing this morning. And um, I'd like to start with the introduction of the guests by our uh, committee secretary, uh, Manang Beth Agas. Good morning, Senator. Uh, for today's public hearing on uh, several legislative measures, starting with uh, Senate Bill Number 432, the Fiscal and Monetary Report Act of, nine, of 2019 by Senator Revilla. Uh, for Senate Bill Number 476, the Fiscal and Monetary Report Act of Senator Recto. For Senate Bill Number 477, the Contingent Liabilities Disclosure Act of Senator Recto. Senate Bill Number 788, the National Evaluation Policy of Senator Ontiveros. For Senate Bill 1321, the Special Defense Economic Zone uh, Act of Senator Recto. And our additional agenda for today is the Senate Bill Number 1885, the Results-Based National Evaluation Policy or RBNEV Act of Senator Marcos. For today's hearing, we invited and the following guests uh, confirmed their confirmed their attendance. Uh, we start off with the National Economic Development Authority. We have Miss Estrella R. Turingan, the Chief EDS TSIS Industry Division. We have Miss Christine M. Villarino, the Chief EDS RTS Regional Development Planning Division. We also have Mr. Limwelti Dimagiba, the Senior EDS RTS Regional Development Planning Division. Ms. Rachel Angela C. Ramos, the Senior EDS NTPS Public Finance Division. Mr. Celso L. Crisostomo Jr., the Senior EDS NPPS Macroeconomics Division. We also have Director Violeta S. Corpus and Assistant Director Jesse K. David. For the Department of Budget and Management, uh, Adir Weberly Galmesa, Assistant Director, confirmed her attendance. For the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Ms. Lara Romina Ganapin, the Acting Deputy Sec Director of the Department of Economic Research. We have Attorney Ruel M. Bumatay, the Deputy Director for the Financial System Integrity Department. And for their support staff, Attorney Joseph B. Salud, Attorney Maridesi Lim, and Ariel Martin Enrile. For the Bataan, uh, Bata uh, for the province of Bataan, uh, uh, we are represented by Mr. Manuel Goles. And for the Department of National Defense, we are represented by Director David L. R. R. L. Cruz as the Acting Dire Director of the Office for Strategy, Capability, and Technology. Uh, Major General Daniel R. Casabar Jr. of the Government Arsenal also confirmed his attendance. That's all for to now. Uh, for to, <laughs> that's all for today, Senator. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to recognize the, um, the minority leader who has just arrived and honored us with his presence. I'll have to refer to him because it appears that uh, certain of these bills were actually approved on third reading in uh, the past uh, Congress. So perhaps you have some insight in that. If um, you will all allow, we will not follow the uh, stated agenda, but instead proceed to the special defense economic zone, being that the uh, uh, stakeholders and other resource persons are all here. So I understand that the DND would like to make a presentation. Is that the correct, uh, yes, Director Cruz? Yes, uh, my minority leader, uh, would you like to uh, um, say a few words? Yes, uh, well, I just want to respond to your observation that some of these bills were approved on third reading in the past Congress. Is that, are you confirming, confirming that, Madam Chair? Yes, yes. that's right. 
Um, apparently, um, there's a confirmation that the fiscal and monetary biannual report requirement was actually approved on third reading in the past Congress. So, uh, I would suggest, uh, in accordance with our practice, uh, Madam Chair, that you manifest on the record that uh, insofar as these measures are concerned, the testimonies of the resource persons and the documents which were, which were uh, submitted uh, in the previous Congress, uh, including the uh, whatever you know, uh, sponsorship speeches and uh, yes. stipulations on the, on the bill itself, be made part of the record. And uh, by that way, you can dispense with the actual committee hearings on those uh, uh, on, on, on those um, uh, bills which were already approved. And uh, that would be compliance with our requirements in accordance with our tradition of not hearing again, not, not uh, duplicating what was done in the previous Congress, but uh, the appropriate motions must be done in your committee so that you can dispense with the actual hearing on these bills which were previously passed in the previous Congress. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Madam Chair. That's my input for your committee. Thank you very much, my Lord Leader. As usual, and uh, very useful advice. And with that, Committee Secretary, um, the 17th uh, Congress, having already um, heard and passed on third and final reading, the uh, proposed Fiscal and Monetary Report Act, all the transcripts, um, sponsorship speeches, and other uh, documents presented shall constitute part of the record for the 18th Congress and this committee. Apo. Uh, the motion, uh, we, for the record, we second the motion of uh, the committee chair. Thank you very much. There being no objections, uh, uh, this motion is hereby passed. So, um, if uh, you will, uh, shall we start with the Special Defense Economic Zone Act by Senator Recto? And I think the DND uh, would like to speak. Perhaps we call on uh, the Acting Director, Mr. Cruz. Thank you, Madam Senator. Yes, do you or uh, General Casabar have a presentation? I was told you had a slide share. Ma'am, we will share a PowerPoint. Okay. Just keep it short. We have a fairly long agenda. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in relation to the Special Defense Economic Zone, this is uh, part and parcel of the whole self-reliant defense posture program of the Department of National Defense. Uh, we found out at the DND that there are several gaps and challenges, uh, including policy gaps for defense science, defense technology, defense research, and appropriate defense policy to support the AFP modernization. So uh, others are uh, the ad hoc uh, approach, which was done in the past. And uh, until now, uh, we don't have that institutional mechanism to uh, facilitate the requirements to build a self-reliant defense posture. And of course, we have observed that uh, most of the modernization projects uh, are not benefiting our country because of the dollar outflows and we want those dollars to be retained in the country so that uh, it will flow within the dom domestic economy. And uh, also uh, in the military spending, uh, we are al almost spending uh, a little above 1% of the GDP for defense. And we lack focus on investing on human material and other 
capital investments so that these technological and industrial capacities for defense industry development should move and develop. And of course, uh, the collaborative mechanisms, although uh, most of the players are here, uh, the policy environment sh should also play a vital role in this. In short, uh, the goals of the self-reliant defense posture is shown in this slide. We want to maintain a strategic stockpile uh, during emergency crisis, including pandemics and the event of war. Uh, we want partial independence from other countries. Uh, we want to provide locally all the basic requirements for the military and, of course, uh, have our own in-country capabilities for manufacturing uh, vessels, air, uh, aircraft, and other armaments. And, of course, uh, we want to value and promote the uh, scientific knowledge and also develop our individual talents. Uh, the industry is also not formalized at the moment. Uh, there is no such sector uh, under DPI and, uh, that categorizes defense industries. Uh, so we want to build that sector. And of course, in all of this, we want them to contribute in the social and economic development of the country. And of course, we want to bank on uh, Filipino talents uh, on nationalism and uh, of course giving premium and uh, uh, value to our Filipino entrepreneurs. We want also that um, the foreign counterparts, especially ministries of defense of other countries who have offered technology transfer uh, agreements uh, we want them to come in and uh, maximize these uh, opportunities so that we can build uh, and uh, move forward to building that self-reliant defense posture. Uh, basically, the components of SRDP are as follows. The institutionalization policy, uh, the organizational capacity for defense, the technology infusion and the research and development, industry development, and of course, the internal process for strategic defense planning and management. Right now, uh, we are advocating at the department uh, three major bills, the Defense Acquisition Act, the Philippine Defense Industry Development Act, and the Special Economic Defense Zone Act. And uh, they will be the mutually supporting policies so that the self-reliant defense posture will push, push through. And of course, uh, this should be supported by a legislative fund for defense uh, that at least uh, give the DND a 2.5% for annual appropriations from the GDP percentage. At the end, uh, we would like to see a genuine modernization program for the Philippines and uh, a significant contribution to the national development, especially in economic uh, development. Part of the capability strategy would be to bank on technologically driven capabilities and then uh, go into more complex asymmetric types of capabilities that would address the 21st century threats and move the organization for more strategy and jointness of forces for efficiency and effectiveness purposes that will build a credible defense and a credible deterrence uh, in the soonest time possible. Right now, uh, as we are doing uh, some policy advocacy, we would like to create that conducive environment. And uh, as soon as these policies are in place, we want to build and execute the projects and of course, in the long run, we would sustain the self-reliant defense posture so that our country will be lesser dependent on other foreign um, defense requirements. 
uh, we would like to increase the investments and the number of industries that, that will produce more jobs and infuse more technologies and of course develop our high tech entrepreneurs and uh, capacitate the technical skills of our workers um, aside from addressing the requirements of the military. We would like these incentives, uh, specifically on tax holidays and other uh, uh, finan fiscal incentives, so that um, as we promote investments, we would like to realize other forms of uh, benefits, uh, such as social and economic benefits to our technical workers, and of course, uh, contribute to the community as well uh, through local taxation. And of course, uh, the industry for certain defense requirements will also create subsidiary industries. This will be the multiplier effects uh, that will promote uh, other income uh, ventures and uh, of course, Im improve our economy. And uh, at the end of it, these subsidiary industries will also um, grow into different subsectors, such as uh, the raw material sector, uh, from metal industries and mining, for, for agriculture, for the production of chemicals and fibers, and of course, and many other uh, subsidiary industries that will be benefiting from the defense industry promotion. Um, this ends our presentation, Madam Chair, and we hope uh, that this could be a good start for uh, supporting the SPEDESA and the other defense-related bills that we have uh, advocated in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much. Is General Sakar um, ready to present the position of uh, our AFP and the uh, government arsenal? Yes, General. Hindi po kayo masyadong naririnig na yung ayokan ko po. Kapit lang po sa mic, please. Ma'am, we support the... Enactment of the bill, the Spedesa bill. Yes, sir. Um, um, if uh, the minority leader has any questions, um, my question would be, is it absolutely necessary that it be uh, near or within the uh, government arsenal and the Luna compound? Dahil alam po ninyo, apat na dyan sa bataan yung ating na iba't ibang mga eco zone. E alam ko yung DOF, ayaw na ng karagdagan. Does it have to be near the government or arsenal? Are there um, locational advantages? Well, of course, uh, since uh, the Camp uh, General Antonio Luna is uh, dedicated to the production of munitions for the armed forces of the Philippines and other uh, government uh, uniform services, uh, we have a 370-hectare uh, lot area here wherein the production of uh, munitions, 16 munitions which we are making since uh, the 70s, the small arms uh, ammunition uh, are being made here and that uh, we have already a plan that uh, the 300 uh, hectares will be dedicated for uh, uh, non-explosive uh, materials and explosive material uh, divided into two here, uh, into two zones here in uh, the government so, arsenal. I see, General. So there's actual production uh, being undertaken in uh, Bataan right now? Uh, we have not yet uh, started with the, the economic zone, uh, defense, special defense economic zone. But you, mentioned, but you mentioned that some small arms or parts were being produced actually in, uh, in uh, Bataan, is that correct? 
Yes, ma'am. Or you just have the land in the. No, but we are already making the small arms subdivision here. We started in 1971. Uh, now we are making uh, about uh, 40 million rounds of assault and I'm sorry, 40 how many? Rounds, 40, sorry, pa. 40 million rounds. 40 million rounds of ammunition. So right now you're not actually making any handguns, but you're producing our ammo. <laughs> Uh, we, we also have a minor capability in the repair uh, and refurbishment yes. of the firearms of the armed forces of the Philippines. So basically, po, gumagawa kayo ng bala, nakakapag-repair kayo, pero sa ngayon, wala pang nakakagawa ng barel. Uh, hindi pa po kami nakakapagkompleto, ma'am, ang barel, because we do not still have that capability. That's right. Uh, Pero yung mga parts, may, may uh, mga ma makinarya po kami na pwedeng uh, gumawa na ng parts uh, and uh, in a minimal uh, quantity, kaya na po namin. Siyempre, opo. Um, secretary, is uh, the uh, uh, Secretary Beth, our committee secretary, may representative din ba yung uh, bataan? Sina Congressman or si Governor Garcia? Parang Madam narinig Chair. ko si Mr. Goles narito to speak for Gov. Abed. Ay, Madam Chair? Yes. Si, si Congressman Joet po, Madam Chair. Are you there? I'm sorry, Joet, are you around? Yes. yes. Um, sorry, so Madam Chair, I'm currently, I'm currently traveling on the way to the house, kaya I turned off my video since unstable po yung internet. <laughs> okay, Senator Duran, as you know, uh, Congressman Joet was a sponsor in the House of the Same Measure. Maybe uh, you'd like to say a few words. I'm sorry, such an inconvenient time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, to the Honorable Chairpersons of the Committees on Economic Affairs, Finance, National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification and Reconciliation and Ways and Means, Resource Persons, guests, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for calling this hearing to on the very important piece of legislation. Uh, um, uh, the chair taking that synergizes government and private enterprises, domestic and international, to put up a globally competitive centralized government sanctioned defense industry that produces conventional weapons and equipment for domestic use and for export. Uh, this will reinvigorate the ongoing modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines and hasten the government's capability to develop a self-reliant and credible strategic armed force. We believe, uh, moreover, the establishment of this economic zone is expected to attract investments that will propel the creation of jobs for the people, especially those in rural areas, increase productivity and improve the quality of our living conditions. With the severe economic disruption uh, caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, it has become even more compelling for the government to create job opportunities that will help alleviate economic dislocation and that adversely affected the working class and the underprivileged. Uh, the special this defense economic zone certainly has the huge potential for job uh, generation. Madam Chair, I heard uh, earlier that uh, uh, you were asking uh, if there's a need to create another authority uh, for this uh, purpose. Even with the presence of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan, of course, PESA has been uh, setting up economic zones all over the country. Uh, Subic is nearby, Clark is nearby also. Uh, since defense is uh, very different, uh, we believe that uh, uh, separate and independent uh, authority be uh, set up for this uh, purpose. As you can see in the bill of uh, Senator Rat and also in my counterpart bill in the house, uh, even the board, uh, uh, the members of the of the board, are uh, uh, very strategic since uh, they know uh, the de defense industry better than anyone else. So if we just give it to say uh, PESA or even the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan, 
uh, it might not fit the, the, the requirements or the real need of uh, uh, this particular economic zone. That's why uh, I believe uh, it's important that uh, this measure uh, be taken into consideration. Also, um, uh, DND suggested in the sharing of the proceeds of the GIE, uh, the gross uh, income earned, uh, part of it will go to the AFP uh, modernization. So my purpose po talaga, Madam Chair, and I don't think this is possible if uh, this is just done through with PESA or uh, or AFAB. So uh, Madam Chair, we uh, look forward. Yes, Joeth. It's Minority Leader. Uh, the concerns were that, uh, as we know, the- uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. I sorry, Joet. Joet, um, last question I'm, na lang kasi um, may tatanong sa ako. Are there actually uh, private investors who have manifested interest to invest? Right now, I only know of Arms Corps, and they are perfectly happy doing what they're doing where they are. So, um, are there actual uh, uh, investors who volunteered? There, there have been uh, investors who have approached uh, the province, Governor uh, Abbott, and they're waiting for the enactment of uh, this measure. But this is it local or a foreign? Uh, on for sure, ma'am. So local with partners uh, in, in international uh, firms. But I think, okay. ma'am, uh, Madam Chair, mas, baka mas may details po ang sila General Casabar or sila Sir David for the uh, mga man nag apply or that have sent uh, their intent to set up. Okay, thanks very much, Joet. Unless the minority has questions of uh, Congressman Joet Pot. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, to Congressman Joel and for the chair and the members of the committee. <clears throat> uh, right now, uh, <laughs> intensively debated in the Senate. <laughs> is the uh, administration-sponsored CREATE bill. And uh, just yes, for the past week, the, the debate has been very intense. And uh, uh, as you probably know, Congressman Joel, it involves the rationalization of fiscal incentives, including the formation of the... Uh, of, 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 of the uh, uh, how do you call it? The, the body, an overall body. Uh, I can't remember the name. Uh, FIRB. FIRB. Uh, the uh, FIRB, which will have final say on the incentives uh, granted. Um, we note uh, that there are existing uh, 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 investment uh, uh, priority, I'm sorry, yes, uh, uh, agencies, the uh, the PESA and the AFAB. Um, realistically speaking, uh, have we secured the uh, uh, opinion, Madam Chair, of uh, the uh, Secretary of the Department of Finance? The reason I'm raising that uh, is that the Chair is fully aware of uh, the uh, reservations uh, of uh, the Chamber on the power of the FIRB. On the other hand, um, uh, uh, let's put it bluntly, while we support this measure, it will run counter to the policies of the Department of Finance uh, to rationalize the incentives, including the agencies, uh, investment promotion agencies, authority to grant incentives, which I presume is being granted to the agency that will form uh, in, uh, in this uh, defense uh, uh, industry. So may we have the comment of the good uh, congressman on uh, how this will uh, jive with the uh, uh, pronounced uh, policy of government in so far as fiscal incentives as, uh, as, as indicated in the CREATE bill. May I, uh, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Yes, sir. please go ahead, Joe. Okay. Joe, what we're talking about here is um, the entirely different set of incentives offered by your bill and reflected in Senator Ralph, um, where you have a GIE of uh, final tax of 5% of gross. 
which will uh, persist for 20 years. All of this in direct contravention of the uh, CREATE bill, which is uh, undergoing tumultuous debate. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Senator Frank. Uh, actually, we've been very uh, active with the uh, CREATE bill uh, now that it's pending in the Senate. We've submitted uh, to uh, Senator Pia uh, certain uh, arguments and also amendments to the bill. So uh, I think choir, choir leader po namin, si uh, Chair Aimee, uh, kasi we believe, we believe that uh, it will really, um, instead of bringing in, in, in the investments, it might, uh, in fact, uh, st uh, slow down investments, uh, number one, because uh, our neighbors are providing uh, more generous uh, incentives, we believe. And then uh, second, the fact that uh, these IPAs were put up uh, is because, and with their own charters, is because uh, we don't have a level playing field. So the charters allow them to put certain advantages that may be uh, possible and that they, that they need uh, to be able to bring in uh, investors in their area. Just to take, uh, for example, the in Bataan, the AFAF, uh, uh, pardon for my term, no? but uh, we might be, the, the, compared to Subic and to Clark, we might not be that attractive. No? So we have to, we, we need to have our own authority and we need uh, certain uh, advantages based on our charter that will allow us to uh, bring in uh, incentives. In fact, uh, Madam Chair, prior to the enactment of AFAB in 2009, uh, we were under PESA. And during that time, since PESA is a centralized, uh, they, they manage different economic zones in the country, uh, an export zone um, among the four public economic zones, which, is, uh, which are uh, Cebu, Cavite, Baguio, and Bataan, we were the laggard, uh, not because, of, not because uh, uh, PESA wasn't doing its job well, but it's because we believe in the principle of subsidiarity. So, uh, if you have a, a dedicated authority within uh, your jurisdiction, then you'll be able to address the concerns and issues uh, that are needed uh, to bring in investors. And true enough, after the amendment of uh, uh, after the enactment of AFAB in 2009, nagreverse po yung uh, Bataan Economic Zone, and in fact, it was one of the fastest growing economic zones in the country. So, dun ho natin makita kung gaano kahalaga na uh, decentralized uh, ito pong ating mga IPAs. That's why uh, we have uh, several amendments to create, uh, hoping for the consideration that uh, we exempt or we leave the IPAs with their own charters so that we'll, they'll be able to be a better salesman. Because, Madam Chair, imagine uh -oh. you're trying to sell, you're trying to sell Bataan, you're trying to sell Clark or Subic. Sure. And then after shaking hands with your, with the prospective investor, you have to tell them, hold on, ah, we, we, we still have to wait for the approval of a FIRB for the incentive. So we cannot consummate uh, this investment sure. yet until okay. the, the approval. And lastly, Madam Chair, ito po... Joe, uh, if I may, ang problema lang kasi, allow us to be devil's advocate here. Alam ko na, eh, kasi meron tayong warning, di ba, both the Senate and the Congress, natigilan na yung echo zone, ipibito ng DOF. So, eto nga, in your case, it's even worse because yun na nga, you have AFAB, you have uh, the Freeport, you have Morong, you have Hermosa, you have a plastic processing center, you have Star Mall Bataan, you have a Chesa Marilan. So, ito yung problem. I think the minority leader wanted to add to that. Yes, and uh, Madam Chair, uh, you know, the committee report of Senator Pia contains the following uh, provision. Section 291, uh, the law shall cover all, uh, all existing investment promotion agencies as defined in this code and related laws and all other investment promotion agencies and civil authorities that may be created by law in the future. Kaya po sakop na sakop itong proposal because this uh, aims to establish uh, 
an uh, economic zone, and I assume there is a uh, in, uh, uh, there is an investment promotion agency within that zone, and will grant um, incentives like uh, the GIA, GIE, which is uh, not uh, which uh, uh, would could be inconsistent with the policies under the um, uh, proposed. Uh, Create so I am just pointing it out to the, to the committee because this will meet the same resistance uh, from that's right from, from uh, Senator Pia uh, based on her committee report. Um, that is the reality that we face here, at Congressman Joel. That's right. Um, yeah. um, yeah, committee sure. Secretary uh, Beth, meron na bang BOF na narito so they can weigh in on this issue. Pero, uh, meron na po, Senator, si uh, Ms. Maria Rowena Santa Clara. Oh, I'd also like to uh, recognize Senator Sherwin Gatsalian. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And we'd like to hear from uh, DOF Santa Clara, please. Uh, good morning, um, Madam Chair, um, uh, Honorable Senators. Um, the, uh, if I may read our position paper, uh, Madam. Uh, you can just tell us the salient points. Ah, yes, madam. Um, uh, the DOF uh, acknowledges the good intention of the bill to enhance opportunities inside the eco zone while strengthening countries' defense capabilities. However, uh, we do not support the above uh, the bill because of the following reasons. Um, first, uh, on the proposed conversion of the GA into SPDES and the creation of SPDESA, uh, the creation of SPDESA as another governmental body is no longer necessary. Um, Republic Act 17916 or the Philippine Economic Zone Authority uh, was created to provide the legal framework and mechanism for the creation, operation, administration, and coordination of economic zones in the country. Um, hence, the proposal will duplicate the functions of PESA and runs counter to government efforts and streamlining the bureaucracy and in promoting fiscal prudence in the allocation of resources. Um, uh, next, um, on the proposed tax incentives, uh, the policy of creating economic zones as a tool to promote development should be viewed not just in the context of jobs and investments generated, but also in terms of the cost to the government of establishing the same. Yes, madam. Tax incentives are not given without cost. I'm sorry. Uh, Correction po, Senator Raimi. Hindi ako si Senator Pia. Kawawa naman si Pia. Madam Chair, sorry. Off ko lang po. Pero... Ah. Yes, uh, number two is the tax incentives. Uh, yes, madam. And then, um, sorry. Uh, number three, um, the, the, the tax incentive provisions of the bill are not aligned with the current comprehensive tax reform proposal of the DOF under the CREATE Act. Uh, which aims to rationalize the country's fiscal incentive, incentive system to make it performance-based, targeted, time-bound, and transparent system. Okay, you okay. On the proposed exemption of SPDES registered manufacturers and suppliers of defense equipment and materials from the provision of the Section 9184, we recommend um, the proposed exemption be removed uh, as under Section 4 of RA 9184, procurement activities of all government agencies and entities shall be governed by the provisions of the law. This is to promote good governance, transparency, accountability, equity, efficiency, and economy in the procurement process. Uh, it is the policy of the... Yes? Oh, Ms. Santa Clara, meron pa bang number five? Ang dami na. <laughs> Actually, Madam Chair, uh, uh, okay, um, so, siguro yun na lang po, Madam Chair. We will submit officially for you. Yes, yes, and we will include Madam, that Madam also. Chair. Yes, okay. Senator Gerardo. Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Senator, sino po ayun? Senator Gerardo, lang po na po. 
Ay, Senator Gillon, yung audio lang po. Yeah. I will ask a direct question on the DOA. <laughs> uh, the way it is crafted today, if the committee will recommend this to the plenary of the Senate and the claim is approved, will you recommend a veto? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, I think um, I will defer to my superiors. If <laughs> what? Uh, can, can I have an answer, uh, Madam Chair? If you want me to pass on the contents of the bill, Madam Chair, um, um, uh, siguro po ang uh, kailangan kong consult yung you're only the messenger we won't kill you promise <laughs> thank you madam chair <laughs> uh, madam yes, chair Dr. Cruz or was not Takong Joet yeah, madam uh, chair if I, I, if I may uh, madam chair yes. uh, Senator Wynn oh, but... sorry Senator Wynn Senator Wynn let's go ahead Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to uh, just want to greet our good minority floor, and uh, his comment is absolutely correct. Because uh, just to give uh, some historical background, Madam Chair, we actually heard this bill last time because it was transmitted to us uh, oh. during the 17th Congress when I was still chairing this committee. And uh, in fact, I, I even went to Spetesa itself. No, to look at the uh, facility because I wanted to understand uh, the importance and also the potential of this uh, ecozone. Mm -hmm. While I admit that the self-reliant defense posture aspirations of the DND is very uh, beneficial to our country moving forward because we will be producing our own uh, armaments, our own ammunition, it's not as easy, it's not as easy as what we think because a substantial investment will be, uh, we need to put substantial investment in order to reach that. Investment meaning the basics, right? infrastructure, power, uh, facilities, etc. And the so, and experience with uh, EcoZones hasn't all been uh, sanguine and successful. Uh, it's not if you build it, they will come, in the back. Correct, uh, Madam Chair. And where we left off, Madam Chair, and these Pedesa people are here, where we left off is I requested for a comprehensive business plan uh, on how to revive this, this, uh, this project for Spedesa. Meaning, if government will plow in, let's say, $2 billion or even more, uh, what savings... Yes, that's the, capital, the capital indicated in the bill is $2 billion exactly, Paul. So if we plow in $2 billion, uh, we are assuming that it will generate savings for DND or AFP. What are those savings? And then second, if we plow in $2 billion, um, what is the potential or... How, what is the return that government will come will, will receive in the future? Because we don't want another white elephant such as the Zamboanga Echo Zone. Madam Chair, you're, you're also chairing that. That's right. I'm not stuck with that. That's correct. Has become a white elephant. But the biggest bomb, uh, Madam Chair, the biggest bomb that was dropped is the bomb from DOF. <laughs> because at that time they issued a blanket uh, statement that they will not support, in essence, all types of ecozones. Kaya po marami na bibig po dyan during the 17th Congress, the one in Tirino, the one in Surigao del Sur, and this one, Madam Chair. So, uh, like, 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 like what Senator Drillon mentioned, we can approve this, pero at the end, pag dumating po sa Malacanya, uh, mavito, sayang lang mo yung pagod po natin. So, that's where we left off last time. It's only a fact I'm afraid. I'm afraid the situation is even more dire now with the create uh, bill uh, looming overhead. May I know from uh, Senator Wynn if he his assessment will the rich bill be approved if we pass it or will <laughs> <laughs> Senator Wynn, that was our basis because when we were discussing this, the veto on the rich bill came up. So more so, we were uh, we told ourselves it might be an act of utility if we continue this bill 
Mm. But the only, the only bill that uh, passed in Senator Dillon knows this is the APA bill. You know, we, so, so, uh, Senator Wynn, you're saying that uh, if the win, if this uh, rich bill uh, is debated okay. because there is already a community report, you will not support it. <laughs> you're putting me on the spot, uh, the minority. <laughs> I will reserve my answer when it comes, when the time comes. <laughs> That's where we left off on, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. That's really valuable input from both the minority leader and the former chairman, who knows better than I the legislative history of this bill. Is Congressman yes. Joe still there? Yes. yes, Madam Chair. Naku, Congressman Joel, pwede ba kausapin na lang natin ang aking mga pinsan dyan sa Arms Corp? Total, sila lang naman talaga ang arms manufacturer dito sa Pilipinas. At uh, sina General at uh, sina Director Cruz, pag-usapan na lang natin na uh, kung pa paano mag-compromise setup dahil mukhang hindi ito pulusot. Saya lang pagkat natin. Kahit gusto natin, yeah, makasukok natin ang ulo natin sa patel eh. Madam Chair, may I? May I ask? Yes, uh, let us uh, allow Congressman Joet please to uh, respond. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, if ever, if and when create this pass, uh, uh, and then I, I, I know na approved na rin po ng uh, Senate yung Bulacan, uh, what will happen to Bulacan? Um, kasi it, baka, baka this, this uh, bill or this authority, or this economic zone we're creating, can also be similar to uh, Bulacan uh, if and when create is uh, passed. Nako, Joet, the short answer is I don't know because umabot lang kami after six and a half, half hours sa page six. Wala pa kami doon. <laughs> ah, wala pa rin doon Bulacan. <laughs> eh, kasi six pages in six and a half hours, eh, talaga medyo, medyo bloody po siya. Okay, so are you open to some kind of a compromise? Because um, I recognize the need for self-reliance in uh, defense and in manufacturing, but uh, the reality is this is simply not the right time. May I, Madam Chair? I think yung... Uh very critical ang dito since defense is a very specialized uh, industry. Uh, it might be very difficult even for the FIRB to appreciate uh, yung uh, ganito pong uh, classing industry. And I think si Sir David po might be able to further expound uh, on this. Kaya po, mas maganda talaga sana kung separate authority po siya. And last yes, but, but I, I was wondering, exactly as uh, as uh, Senator Sherwin said, did you ever produce a uh, comprehensive business plan uh, writing out exactly how much would be saved and thereafter the realistic projection for profit? Meron bang business plan yan? Kasi tama naman si uh, Senator Sherwin. Kapag nakapakita natin na malaki talaga ang uh, nawawalda at pwedeng uh, 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 pagkitaan, ay eh, eh, talagang may laban tayo nito. Pero kung hindi, mukhang malabo talaga. Um, I think on the part of the ND, ma'am, uh, we will uh, facilitate uh, producing that uh, business plan. Sige. With the arsenal. But uh, realistically, before... <laughs> your, realistically, your savings really will be only in small arms and perhaps some ammunition and uh, certain parts. Uh, my father embarked on a very ambitious self-reliance defense uh, project. So um, I'm quite familiar with this, but our capacities are so low. So realistically, we can save all the weaponry expense of AFP ngayon, pati yung uh, PNP, we can save all the PNP. So, the other thing is, as Senator Wynn, I don't know if this was the case before, and Congressman Joet and the Minority Leader, meron palang pending yung DND, na application din for a special defense economic zone. Is this the same thing, and what's happened to it? Because Secretary Lorenzana has not pushed it forward either. Madam Chair, baka ito po yung pending application sa PESA? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, kini, ayaw i-endorse ni Secretary Lorenzana rin eh. 
I think, Madam Chair, uh, kaya ayaw niya endorse kasi they're uh, looking at this uh, measure uh, which is more fit to the needs of uh, the, the DND. Kaya hindi na ho nila pinursu yung sa PESA kasi this is more tailored fit to their needs. Madam Chair, also with yung uh, amount of investments, Marami, marami nag-aalma rito kasi meron pa kayong sariling customs, di ba? Customs, ma'am? Oo, may customs na hiwalay, ayon sa bill. Ah, yung uh, like like any other economic zone, ma'am, yung customs so separate uh, so that they can monitor also the movement of uh, goods and uh, sir, uh, goods inside the economic zone. But That's may, right. The problem is the problem is you're producing uh, uh, material for weaponry, so medyo sticky point. Uh, that's not garments and so on. So, yes. ma'am, may may provision din po tayo sa bill for uh, the authority to partner with the private. So, bakangaho, we can also submit to the committee yung mga interested uh, parties that have signified their intention. Ah, uh, kasi baka nga ho hindi ka na ganun kalaki yung investment ng government because the yeah. private sector is very interested in uh, setting this up uh, in, co in, 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 re in coordination, of course, with the uh, DNP. Tom Joel, when you talk about the private sector, there's really only one gun manufacturer in the Philippines. That's really only arms core. Are they uh, interested in uh, coming in? Sila lang naman talaga may experience at may track record. Yes, uh, I've talked to them also, Madam Chair. Uh, they are interested, but there are also other groups now, uh, consortiums, local and foreign, that are That's interested right. also in uh, helping us with this uh, defense economic zone and bringing in uh, investors. Yeah, okay. Because Arms Corps, Arms Corps, if truth be told, um, they didn't need fiscal incentives. They didn't need an echo zone. They just went ahead and invested. So I'm wondering if you have a good business plan, um, like earlier mentioned, um, incentives and an echo zone aren't going to make a difference, actually, if truth be told. So, eto na lang. So, uh, Director Cruz, kung maari, <laughs> uh, if you have any data, uh, or a uh, bit of a business plan man lang to give and then um, uh, uh, yung mga potential investors and I call on the committee secretary kung okay lang kung okay. pwede um, tawagan yung arms corps kung ano yung position nila rito I'm sure may komentaryo sila rito dahil uh, uh, kabisado rin nila ito and perhaps an update from PESA uh, officially kung ano na nangyari doon sa uh, for another special defense zone. So, so Joet, in the meantime, uh, let's be creative na in thinking of uh, compromise given the reality of CREATE. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we'll submit uh, the list of uh, investors and their plans also how they can help. And then, uh, yes, I agree, Madam Chair, with the uh, with, with, with create, uh, if and when it's passed, uh, of course, we, we need to uh, maybe amend the measure, Madam Chair. Can you tell me? Yes, Madam Chair. The Senator Sherwin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> Madam Chair, we, actually, when we were looking for a way for ways to move forward, uh, we actually suggested to Spedesa two modes, no? Number one is through PESA. Uh, they can be accommodated and uh, certified by PESA. And the other one by ACA because we expanded the powers of ACA to cover the entire province of Bataan. So it's right. the PESA of Bataan. So just to move things forward, we suggested to PESA to be uh, certified or accommodated or absorbed by Alpha, because Alpha can do it with their power. And Tom Jones, okay, but very... because they can then avail of uh, original or old investor incentives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if this very well because he's the godfather of the uh, expanded Alpha powers. <laughs> but it's um, that's another way forward, no? just to. Uh, yes, hello. Hello. That's right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Sherwin. We really want yes. uh, to uh, to uh, support this bill, but like you said, the realities are grim at the moment. 
Ma may I? Yes, Director Cruz. Yes, uh, this will be the first part we need to move on in our agenda. Uh, actually, uh, the, the main uh, distinction of SPDESA is one, this is for a unique particular sector, which is defense. Uh, which, uh, unfortunately, if you look at PESA, it's export-oriented. And uh, the local... To the bill, you, according to the bill, this is also export-oriented. And the consumption is actually minimal. Correct, But if we use PESA, uh, it will be uh, more on exports rather than utilization from with, within the country. And then the last second, the market. Sir, as you know, the market in the Philippines, the local market is minute. Even if you compel uh, the AFP and the PM to uh, avail. Of the Commodore? Yes. Uh, so that's that's the way the AFP is What's I mean? What's I mean? Also, ma'am, uh, this sector is a highly regulated sector. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the Strategic Trade Management Act uh, for uh, weapon uh, for the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and the Investment Act, which prohibits uh, foreign ownership. Uh, those are the things that we would like to solve. Don't worry, Director Cruz. Uh, we're on your side. Senator Sherwin, uh, Congressman Joab, and I are all on your side. And uh, we recognize and applaud the uh, motive for this bill. However, the reality of uh, the times where, two billion, where a $2 billion uh, investment is required wow. and uh, further uh, erosion of our tax uh, resources uh, are, uh, are simply realist, unrealistic at this point. So, uh, maghahanap tayo ng uh, paraan. Pag-usapan natin at arali natin ulit ito. Okay? Thank you very much, and uh, the DNB may uh, may leave now. Thank you very much, and if you had anything more that uh, you wanted to submit, General and Director Cruz, uh, feel free to do so. Yung business plan po ninyo para medyo maintindihan natin. Um, Senator Wynn, I'm going to take advantage of your presence. Mukhang itong Fiscal and Monetary Report Act na approved na on third and final reading nung nakaraang Kongreso. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the legislative history. Bakit hindi naging batas na abutan na lang ending? Yes, in in the uh, Madam Chair, before I answer that, I'll take advantage of the presence of the Director Cruz. Kumandyan pa uh, sa spedesa. Um, I, I know the strategic importance of defense. Yes. I think the best way forward also is to get a clearer signal from Malacanya on this strategic value of defense. Because right now, what we are getting is fiscal management is more important. Uh, uh, incentive management is more important. But if we are saying that defense is supreme, uh, uh, supreme over... Uh, over incentives, then we should get a clearer signal, a clearer signal on that, so that we can move forward. Because what right now what we are hearing is from the OF you no, know, and uh, we don't know the position. But if we are saying that defense is ultimately a much more important strategic value to us, then that signal should be communicated so that we can we know how to move forward. Yes, perhaps, uh, Committee Secretary, we can make inquiries with uh, SND uh, so that he can let us know if uh, there are indications from Malacanang that uh, regardless of the qualms of the OF, the uh, defense posture is more important para mabalanse natin maigi. Walang taga-arm score dito, uh, Beth? Wala po, Senator. Wala pong taga-arm score. Uh, sige, dapat, dapat tanungin rin natin ang opinion nila kasi sila nakakaintindi ng negosyo to eh. Anyway, the Fiscal and Monetary Report Act, mukhang, uh, mukhang na-approve nito dati, but uh, maybe we can call on the, the resource persons from DOF, BSP, and BPM. 
Yeah. Madam Chair, just to give you a brief background the history, uh, it was approved here in the Senate. It passed on third reading. Unfortunately, okay. in the lower house, they didn't manage to approve this. Ah, oh, wala siyang counterpart. Pero may counterpart measure siya. May counterpart, madam. Wala lang, uh, hindi lang pumasa. Ah. So in our case, it passed on third reading, but in the lower house, uh, it never uh, passed on third reading. So uh, it, we have to uh, start from the beginning again. I see, I see. But uh, we had the uh, valuable input of the minority leader that all the hearings conducted, the uh, sponsorship speeches, and uh, the uh, uh, position papers of the uh, resource persons will be uh, included in our uh, present uh, uh, consideration. So, i-update natin yan. At uh, meron rin kasi sana ako sasabihin, I don't know, uh, perhaps you've seen Senate Bill 477, and this is uh, from Senator Recto, and this is the disclosure of contingent liabilities. I'm wondering if we can put this all together with the Fiscal and Monetary Report Act para iisa na lang siya. Um, as you know, the Fiscal and Monetary Report Act requires that a uh, more detailed biannual report uh, be presented to Congress on the status of the fiscal and monetary policies of the government, economic developments, taking into account past and prospective developments, given that our only real opportunity today is during the DBCC and the budget hearings. So it's a very one-sided uh, look at uh, the finances of government. So yung uh, sinasabi ko naman na contingent liability, um, marami kasing uh, hindi na didisclose sa atin na tinatanong natin, for example, all the fine print in the loans from China, Japan, Korea, and so on, that uh, Senator Recto seeks to uh, uh, make public. So, ito yung uh, uh, itatanong ko. So, perhaps uh, DOF can begin. Um, good morning ulit, Madam Chair. Uh, 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 on the bill which seeks, seeks to mandate the executive officials of the DOF, the DBM, NEDA, and BSP to biannually appear before a joint session of Congress and submit a report on the status and corrections, directions of the government's fiscal and monetary policies and economic development uh, the DOF finds, uh, in the pursuit of transparency and accountability, the current reporting practices of the relevant agencies are already substantively adhering to the objectives of the bill. Uh, we note that similar with the DBM, NEDA, and BSP, the reporting requirements requested from the DOF are readily available and regularly reported in the budget of expenditures and sources of financing. Our in these reports are actually submitted to the DBM, as reflected in Table A and Table B of the BSF. Uh, these reports are also discussed at length during budget hearings in which economic managers do a presentation on the economy. Should uh, the biannual meetings with the joint session of Congress be required over and above the DBCC budget hearings, uh, the agenda must be clearly focused on current macroeconomic conditions and fiscal policy. Okay, thank you very much. Perhaps uh, the BSP would like uh, to uh, weigh in as well. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Lara Benoit from the Banco Central. Uh, uh, yes. Just to add, just to add to uh, yes. Dr. Uh, Santa Clara's um, uh, intervention, uh, we also note that uh, the BSP also submits on a quarterly basis uh, report on economic and financial development. Uh, we we submit this quarterly report to the president, the Senate president, uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the chair of the Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies uh, of the Senate, uh, the chair of the Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries of the House of Representatives, and the chair of the Committee on Economic Affairs of the Senate and of the House of Representatives. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, your sense is that there is already an adequate biannual report. Um, no, sorry, DBCC is quite adequate. Ganun ba yun? 
Uh, yes, Madam Chair, in addition to the uh, DBCC uh, um, presentation, we also provide on a quarterly basis a report on economic and financial developments. Right. Okay. Um, is there um, any other uh, uh, comment, please? How we from Ned Asiburo and uh, thank you. I thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, if you're done. Okay. Um, Madam yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you very much from Neda Po. Uh, Neda. Uh, so we're just waiting for clearance of our position paper, but I'd like to note, Madam Chair, that in the previous uh, Congress, we've already expressed uh, support for this bill. Uh, we just had a few comments on some of the details in terms of the timing, for instance. We had suggested in the past that uh, perhaps uh, one of the two uh, appearances could coincide with the DBCC uh, briefings for Congress uh, during the budget uh, deliberations. Uh, on the other hand, with respect to the specific uh, reports that are being requested from NEDA, uh, we just wanted to note that, for instance, with respect to poverty statistics, these are based on the Family Income and Expenditure Survey, which is done uh, every three years. So this cannot be reported uh, every year. Uh, so we would uh, propose that uh, uh, this be deleted, just be included in the uh, catch all uh, requirement for other related information. We will report on that whenever it's uh, available. Okay, um, I will suspend for five minutes uh, to take an important call and uh, we'll come back. So that's, uh, we're at 11.13 uh, or so. So can we come back at 11.18, uh, sorry.
Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Reynaldo Cancho of NEDA. Uh, thank you very much. Um, did you have anything to add to that? That's all, man. Basta okay lang sa inyo, basta i-chempo na lang yung ikalawa sa DBCC para minsana na lang. Uh, yes, yes, Madam Chair. Pwede po. Oh, no man. Uh, I understand. Um, also, um, I just like to recap. So, the in the case of DOF and BSP, uh, sana wag na more or less tama ba yon? Dahil uh, parang kompleto na yung pagre-report niyo. Is that correct, um, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, uh, we're not opposing naman po. We're we're just uh, saying na um uh. Uh, may, yung, yung topic is uh, pro, uh, different from what is what will be discussed in the DPCC. Yes, right? actually, uh, to be really truthful, I had some con concerns about that, which is why I want to get into the next bill, which is the um, disclosure of contingent liabilities. That's why uh, uh, perhaps we can put it together so that the BSP, the DOF, who also uh, expressed some um, uh, concerns, uh, I would not have to be repeating the same uh, report over and over again. Um, what if, in addition to the usual uh, reports uh, that you give annually, uh, you do it biannually, but in addition, also reveal the contingent liabilities, uh, the financial obligations where there are fiscal risks. This is um, the bill of Senator Recto, another one, 477. For example, if there are contingent explicit liabilities with hidden subsidies, drains on the government's finances, all of that would complicate fiscal analysis. Pero kung ang tanging informasyon lang namin ay yung DBCC, hindi naman namin alam yun. So, uh, there should be a, a more uh, um, uh, transparent disclosure of what may be more expensive in the long run and may even create moral hazards, particularly if government uh, guarantees um, all sorts of assets and risk. Ano? So, ito yung uh, iniisip namin. Uh, because we also are not aware of legal claims against the government. As you recall, yung sa National Power Corporation drivers, yung Mechanics Association case, tapos ngayon may Mandana's case, ano ba talaga impact niyan? So all these things we wanted uh, to, uh, to see if perhaps these contingent liabilities um, could be revealed. Um, more transparently. So, yung sa bill ni Senator Recto, halimbawa, the, um, the uh, full disclosure um, would mean uh, contingent liabilities are reported out in a, um, not only the fiscal risk statement that you're already giving us, but the, uh, the inclusion of sensitivity analysis and then um, integrated in a budget cycle because uh, we don't know when uh, these loans and other payments fall due. So we could work closer with both the BSP, the DOF, and the NEDA, and the DPM. There should also be, uh, with you, I'm hoping that you'll give us some kind of uh, clarification on the type of contingent liabilities that uh, should be included. We know there are explicit and as well there are implicit liabilities. The other question, because of my background, of course, is that should we include the LGU units um, uh, loans, for example? Because for coherence, I think um, all contingent liabilities should be revealed in total. Uh, yung sa LGU also poses many risks. So ito yung isa pang bill na sa pakiwari ko, like you said earlier, I don't want the DOF or the BSP reporting over and over again about the same thing. But uh, I was wondering if we could uh, include the contingent liabilities in this biannual report requirement. What are your thoughts, uh, DOF please, and BSP naman? Uh, 
Uh, Madam Chair, uh, may I defer to BPR on the contingent liabilities? Okay. Is there a representative, uh, Secretary A. Beth? Yes, Senator. We have Director Dominique Mariano from the BTR. Okay. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, Madam Chair, we fully support the objectives and the, uh, the initiatives being proposed in the bill. Uh, we are, of course, for the uh, transparent reporting of our liabilities and any other contingent eventualities uh, in whatever sector there may be in the uh, public financial management. Um, a few points din po, do sana mention nyo. Uh, well, you... Uh, you already mentioned the fiscal risk statement and how it can be better integrated into the budget cycle. Yes. Uh, we, do, uh, we do target, Madam Chair, a submission of the FRS alongside our uh, submission of the other budget documents um, right after the SONA. Uh, this, the aim is, of course, to better inform our uh, our legislative uh, our legislative bodies regarding the risks that uh, are embodied in the budget and of course in uh, ongoing uh, initiatives or proposed measures the director even the timing is miserable you give us the fiscal risk assessment back to back with the uh, proposed budget so, wala nang halos magawa, wala nang panahon basahin at araling maigi, at uh, hindi namin alam yung timetable. So, ang proposal, eh, ipaliwanag ito, and we do it by annually so that uh, we can work in consonance with you uh, more closely. I think that's what Senator Recto wants to happen. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we, we support that naman po, and uh, we, we also acknowledge that the content of the FRS can be improved. Uh, the, the only matter will be, of course, with regards to the timing. Uh, there are, of course, yeah. certain, uh, for example, ma'am, uh, we cover do sa mga... Kasi iba yung budget cycle natin, iba naman kasi July, tapos may fiscal yes. year, di ba? So, yes. bakit hindi tumutog mo, tapos may lifespan din at uh, schedule yung ating mga utang. So, parang hindi tumutog mo lahat eh. Yes, and of course, all the parameters are constantly evolving just like what happened this year when we were set to release the FRS and then we were overtaken by the developments of course of the pandemic and then we had to revise to come up with a more uh, realistic uh, version but uh, perhaps we can really uh, enhance some of the measures so that we are able to come up with a substantive report uh, in line with the uh, timeline. Thank you very much uh, for your openness and candor, and uh, we appreciate that. There were also several concerns, perhaps uh, you can help us, um, um, on the part of Senator Recto, and admitted, in fact, by our own um, uh, Secretary Dominguez, that uh, despite the early rush to uh, obtain China loans, in the end, we discovered through uh, much, uh, through much, um, uh, contingent liability investigation that they were not as favorable as they initially looked. And then bumalik tayo sa Japanese kasi yung pala mas mura nga mga utang doon. So these things, perhaps uh, uh, the legislature could uh, be privy to so that uh, we could help you and support your final decisions. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, with the with regards naman ma'am to the bilateral assistance or the program loans that we incur, yes. uh, there is there is a group within the Department of Finance, of course it's the International Finance Group, which manages or looks into the concessionality and the terms that we enter into in these obligations. Uh, I, I understand lang ma'am, uh, from a personal, I don't know, my understanding of this is that um, the, the difficulty is hindi po kasi palaging apples to apples yung comparison ng China at Japanese oh, loans, it's not just the interest rate that we look into, but also the other terms and, uh, uh, let's say, for example, exchange rates. Siyempre, um, at saka kung kailangan yeah. mo sa loob yung project, ano? kung talagang priority, and, talagang titiisin mo na lang. Yes, ma'am. And, of course, the the the, the, the partners, uh, the the governments, Japan, uh, Japanese and Chinese, of course, have their own 
uh, objectives. For example, um, some support rail, some support large dam infrastructures. So it's not always an apples to apples comparison uh, wherein they tender the same offer for similar projects. Yes, we're aware of that, Mr. Mariano. And as well, I think the IMF itself has already uh, put out exemptions. Uh, may exemptions to disclosure na talagang, uh, will cause trouble if there are some implicit contingent liabilities to minimize moral hazard. Information that is quantified would prejudice economic interest, security, defense, international relations, ongoing litigation and negotiation. Lahat yun exempted naman. Naintindihan naman Natin yes, Madam Chair. Yes, so um, um, perhaps uh, if there is there anyone else who would like to comment on both the uh, biannual report requirement as well as the contingent report? BBM uh, is here. Baka gusto nga mag uh, salita ng ating BBM. So pakiwari ba ninyo, eh, pwede tayo mag-report dalawang beses isang taon in bis na BBCC lamang. Uh, good morning po, Madam Chair. I'm yes. Evangelista po, liaison officer of the DBM. So, yes. on the part of the DBM po, uh, we have no objection on the bill since uh, actually po, we are doing this po for the longest time. And uh, actually po, every 10th, uh, on according to Section 1991 of the 2020 GAA, we usually mm -hmm. do the monthly reporting po and we publish it on our agency website. So one of our opinion lang po, one of our comment lang po on the bill according to Section 3 is that maybe we could actually specify po uh, the actual reporting period, the required reporting yes, period yes. that we are about to submit during March and September. Other than that, uh, I think we adhere naman po with the provision of, provisions of the bill. Sige, thank you. Thank you very much for, very much for, for that support. Um, I was going to comment also that in addition to requiring some kind of LGU information, particularly with regard to the Mandana's ruling impact on our budget, um, perhaps, uh, Committee Secretary, if you uh, take note, we should explicitly include the PPP in Section 6 also. So if uh, Senator Gachalian and the minority leader would allow, I think at this juncture we can compose a TWG to uh, more um, uh, precisely explain what this biannual report will be and include in there the improvements in the fiscal risk assessment and contingent liabilities that we never hear about and Senator Recto seeks to uh, find. So, um, kung okay, tawagan na natin yung ating, yes, uh, Minority Leader, please. No, we endorse the suggestion of uh, uh, the the chair. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for that support. And uh, with that, um, we uh, then uh, terminate the hearing on 432, Senate Bill 476, and uh, Senate Bill 477. We're now left with two bills. Um, uh, so, uh, who will be members of the TWG? I think uh, we will be meeting uh, the Treasury, the OF, NEDA, DBM, uh, PPP most likely, and perhaps someone from the LGU. Please take note, Committee Secretary Beth. Copy, copy, pop. Okay, thanks very much. And now we're... Uh, the last two bills are from Senator Risa Ontiveros, as well as myself. And this is to do with the evaluation policy that uh, we are now um, attempting uh, to uh, implement throughout government. As we know, we have so many projects, some of them don't work out so well. And yet year on year, um, we keep providing funding for them with very little notion of their actual impact of their uh, success in um, um, delivering the uh, targets that we had um, imposed in the first place. So, ito nga, the national evaluation policy, yung sa akin, results-based national evaluation policy, dahil yun ang sinabi ng OECD. So, um, shall we call on NEDA first, in as much as you're in charge of our evaluation uh, policy? Good, 
Good morning, Madam Chair. Yes, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Uh, while we are awaiting clearance from our uh, principals on our official uh, comments on the bills, I could already uh, express our, uh, well, of course, our full support. Because we know that the both bills are uh, well intentioned and in full support of our uh, uh, joint uh, member circular for EBM and MEDA on the national evaluation policy framework, for which most of the sections and uh, the intention of that framework are carried on to these uh, separate bills. So, uh, while uh, there is no uh, official uh, transmission of our comments, uh, we, we express our su support to these uh, Senate bills. Yes, ma'am. This is actually what we want to happen. And because uh, right now, um, NEDA has uh, already pilot tested few evaluation activities by way of commissioning these studies and the uh, Maybe you would recall also that uh, we all already shared you know, the results and the findings of those evaluation studies when you requested during the Senate deliberation uh, last month. So I hope, ma'am, uh, uh, that expression is uh, in support of the policy of, uh, yes, both uh, bills. So uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, as additional comments also, uh, we just observe that both bills also mention uh, both monitoring and evaluation. Uh, what uh, we probably uh, would recommend is really uh, to focus more on evaluation per se, because if this is an act for the evaluation, we could all already uh, focus on the guiding principles uh, for evaluation and of course as a background there we could only mention the uh, first uh, the, the important reforms done by DBM including of course the RBMR policy the one on the AO25 harmonization of results based uh, a performance uh, system across government agencies because all of these are only uh, the first few reforms that really uh, strengthen uh, the results focus of the government. When we talk about uh, results, of course, it spans the spectrum of uh, monitoring, gathering data, in determining the efficiency of the policies, programs, you know, and projects the government implement. But uh, when you talk about the uh, cycle of these programs policies, we can actually separate the planning, the budgeting, the implementation, the monitoring, and evaluation cases. In an integrated uh, manner, all of this could be looked at, and we actually uh, a lot of uh, institutional frameworks uh, for planning, for monitoring, for implementation, but not yet on evaluation. That's right. So, uh, yes, ma'am. So I think, ma'am, uh, we need more focus on evaluation for this act. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Corpo from NEDA, and thank you for the support of NEDA. I'm certain that this will be valuable for all of us, uh, particularly in times like this, um, during the yes. budget cycle, um, when we have to make very, very uh, difficult choices and select projects. For the information of our minority leader and for the former chairman, um, this project for evaluation brought about many DBM reforms, including uh, the harmonization of uh, systems in government. I was also uh, 
privy uh, to the UNDP assessment that they assisted NEDA to assess the K-12. And uh, there were some quite harsh conclusions uh, that we have to come to realize. So, may gamit naman siya, pero siguro yung comment ko kay Ms. Corpus kung bakit included yung monitoring and evaluation because there's really very little data. Kaya, ayan, dinagdag na naman yung monitoring, but you're quite right. The uh, focus of all this effort is to evaluate which projects have actually delivered and uh, met their targets and impacted people's lives rather than uh, funding year on year the same failed projects. So, uh, yun ang gusto natin mangyari. I think um, there are very uh, few distinctions between the bills. What is your opinion on the uh, addition of results based as uh, required by the OECD? Yes, ma'am. We, we agree on that. Uh, of course, the, the one, uh, the bill by uh, Senator Riz, Riz uh, Hontiveros states on the, the explanatory note that that of course the major OECD then. Uh oh. Compliance with OECD. Oh, so OECD naman po yun yung sayin yung ma'am. That is good because we we want to take uh, on the global practice. What is the yeah, eh. practice in doing evaluation? Exactly. So, I think uh, yeah. there's really only one standard, and that's the world standard. Let's yeah, uh, step standard. up to the plate. Um, yes, the yes. other issue is that I wanted to impose a time frame so that uh, it jives with the PDP, the Philippine Development Plan, and the Public Investment Program para tugma-tugma tayo sa evaluation para sakto siya dun mag invest ang gobyerno. Yes, ma'am. In fact, the intention really is to get agencies to develop their rolling evaluation plans so that all proposed projects will have an accompanying document that is the evaluation plan that will detail the future evaluation to be done in any particular program project. And that's the problem is, is, yeah, yun po the problem is these evaluations are always so delayed, too delayed for the lawmakers to base their decisions upon. That's why I want to impose a timeline so that we are informed before the uh, uh, before the budget, for example, or the other financial bills are uh, um, legislated. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Because the ev evaluation planning po na intended to be done by agents should be a rolling evaluation plan updated on an annual basis, which should include ongoing evaluation of the programs and projects currently being implemented, and also those completed programs and projects that would need uh, evaluation after completion. So, sama-sama na po yung programa ng agency. Yun na nga eh. nila. Okay. So, maybe sa so, IRR po yun. Nako, allergic na po kami sa IRR. Hanggat maaari, eh, si minority leader ko at uh, si Senator Gatsalyan, ayaw na namin ng IRR. Eh. Then, then we could just include in that portion the evaluation plan. Uh, yes. po yung intention natin. Okay, maybe uh, the other financial institutions have uh, opinions. Is uh, there any comment from uh, the OF, BSP, DBM? Uh, meron ba kayong maidadagdag dito sa ating uh, results-based evaluation? Okay. Uh, yung ating mga senador, okay lang to. Yung evaluation para madali ang ating pagdidesisyon. Uh, right now, the only thing we have to base on are the COA reports. And we will end up being a bunch of uh, bookkeepers and prosecutors lang. Kasi yun lang information namin. Eh, dapat mas malawak ang aming kaalaman. So, thank you. If uh, there are no more comments on the uh, evaluation system, I uh, recommend that the committee secretary, as well as NEDA, come up with a draft of uh, the final version so we can report it out in the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.
Can I now leave, uh, Madam Chair? Yes, very much so. Thank you very much. We can have an early meal for a change. Yes, and I expect you this afternoon with Senator Wynn to witness the very bloody debate. Yes, sir. I will uh, bring uh, all the massage therapy, uh, essential oils, and other relaxants. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a 42-page bill, so we have finished uh, six pages in six hours. So you would expect uh, the next 32 hours or 40 hours uh, for the amendments. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much, our Minority Leader. Uh, we are resting up for that marathon. And uh, to my former Chairman, Sherwin Katsalian, maraming salamat sa pag-attendin yung lahat at ang ating um, minamahal na DND, yung ating uh, government arsenal, yung ating uh, mga BSP, uh, DBM, NEDA, DOF. Thank you very much. Yes. Madam Chair, just as a just just to uh, as a parting uh, suggestion, I was looking at the proposal of Senator Recto on the contingent liability. Uh oh. Uh, we can actually merge that with the fiscal and monetary reporting. Oh, that's what I that's what I uh, that's what I told them. Because I said that the BSP and the DOF are the same in the fiscal risk assessment. Pa ulit ulit na lang yung information. Sabi ko, lagay na ninyo yung yung uh, contingent liability disclosure. So magtitwg na sila para ipagkaisa. Yes, uh, that's a good suggestion. So we can merge the two bills into one. Oh, pareho tayo. Yung kaniyisip ko. Oh, oh, correct. Thank you, thank you. Mabuti nandito ka ngayon, nasabi mo yung uh, nangyari dati. Thank you po. Goodbye everyone. Miss Mortega, Miss Corpus, uh, malaking tulong po kayo. Thank you. Thank so you yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Okay, marami tayong trabaho, dear. Apo.